Hare Krishna, <clears throat> my dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just near the English Channel, where we've set up a BBT enclave, an ashram, BBT ashram, dedicated to um, disseminating transcendental sound. Uh, through these daily readings and also through audiobooks and you'll be happy to know that the I've already told you once but the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita is now complete except for the mastering which is on the way and it's going fast and it, I would say another couple of months maybe a little bit more and hopefully that transcendental sound will be distributed to the world. Yes, big thing for us. <clears throat> we hope you're all safe and well and happy and wherever you are in the world and continue, continuing your devotional lives peacefully in the midst of the chaos that's going on in the world. Uh, we aim to help that by delivering Srila Prabhupada's books in this form, in the form of the sound. Srimad Bhagavata Mihima Stotram from the Sri Krishna Lila Stava by Srila Sanatana Goswami is a beautiful glorification of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It goes like this Sarva Shastra Dipi Yusha, Sarva Vedai Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja. Sarva Lokai Kadrik Prada. O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kalidvan Ditya, Sri Krishna. Parivartita, O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshakshadayate, Sarvada Sarvasevyaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you, who were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka bando matsangin, madguru man mahadana, man nistadaka mad bhagya, mad anandana My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadu tadayin atini chuchata kada hanamun chakadachin mam premnarit kantayokspura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly. O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <clears throat> So we've reached the fourth uh, chapter of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam in which the history is going to be unfold before the actual uh, text begins. Um, the, the reading of uh, Maharaj uh, Shukadeva Goswami to Maharaj Prikshit. The basic historical background is going to be given in this first canto. This 
chapter is the appearance of Narada. He's kindly, as Prabhupada says, appeared in this chapter to give us association. We're beginning with text number 12. Those who are devoted to the cause of the Personality of Godhead live only for the welfare, development, and happiness of others. They do not live for any selfish interest. So even though the Emperor Parikshit was free from all attachment to worldly possessions, how could he give up his mortal body, which, which was the shelter for others? Purport. Prikshit Maharaj was an ideal king and householder because he was a devotee of the Personality of Godhead. A devotee of the Lord automatically has all good qualifications and the emperor was a typical example of this. Personally, he had no attachment for all the worldly opulences in his possessions. But he was a king, but, but since he was king for the all-round wel welfare of his citizens, he was always busy in the welfare work of the public, not only for this life, but also for the next. He would not allow slaughterhouses or killing of cows. He was not a foolish and partial administrator who would arrange for the protection of one living being and allow another to be killed. Because he was a devotee of the Lord, he knew perfectly well how to conduct his administration for everyone's happiness, men, animals, plants, and all living creatures. He was not selfishly interested. Selfishness is either self-centered or self-extended. He was neither. <clears throat> his, interest was, his interest was to please the Supreme Truth, the Personality of Godhead. <clears throat> the King is the representative of the Supreme Lord. And therefore the King's interest must be identical with that of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord wants all living beings to be obedient to Him and thereby become happy. Therefore, the king's interest is to guide all subjects back to the kingdom of God. Hence, the activities of the citizens should be so coordinated that they can at the end go back home, back to Godhead. Under the administration of such a representative king, the, king in the, the kingdom is full of opulence. At that time, human beings need not eat animals. There are ample food grains, milk, fruit, and vegetables, so that the human beings, as well as the animals, can eat sumptuously and to their heart's content. If all living beings are satisfied with food and shelter and obey the prescribed rules, there cannot be any disturbance between one living being and another. Emperor Parikshit was a worthy king and therefore all were happy during his reign. Text 13 We know that you are expert in the meaning of all subjects except some portions of the Vedas and thus you can clearly explain the, the answers to all the questions we have just put to you. Purport. The difference between the Vedas and the Puranas is like that between the Brahmanas and the Parivrajakas. The Brahmanas are meant to administer the Brahmanas are meant to administer some fruitive sacrifices mentioned in the Vedas. The, but the Parivrajakacharyas or learned preachers, are meant to disseminate transcendental knowledge to one and all. 
As such, the Paribhajakacharyas are not, all, are not always expert in pronouncing the Vedic mantras, which are practiced systematically by accent and meter by the Brahmanas, who are meant for administering Vedic rites. Yet it should not be considered that the Brahmanas are more important than the itinerant preachers. They are one and, di they are one and different simultaneously because they are meant for the same end in different ways. There is no difference also between the Vedic mantras and what is explained in the Puranas and Itihasas. According to Srila Jiva Goswami, it is mentioned in the Madhyadini Shuti. According to Srila Go Jiva Goswami, it is mentioned in the Madhyandina Shruti that all the Vedas, namely the Sama, Atharva, Rig, Yajur, Puranas, Itihasas, Upanishads, and so on, are emanations from the breathing of the Supreme Being. The only differences are that the Vedic mantras mostly begin with Pranava Omkara and that it requires some training to pronounce the metrical accent without which the mantras cannot be successfully chanted. Although Srila Sutta Goswami was a preacher of the first order, he did not bother much about the metrical pronunciation of the Vedic mantras. But that does not mean that Srimad Bhagavatam is of less importance than the Vedic mantras. On the contrary, it is the ripened fruit of all the Vedas, as stated before. Besides that, the most perfectly liberated soul, Sri Lashukadeva Goswami, is absorbed in the studies of the Bhagavatam, although he is already self-realized. Sri Lashukadeva Goswami is following his footsteps and therefore his position is not the least less important because he was not expert in chanting Vedic mantras with metric pronunciation, which depends more on practice than actual realization. Realization is more important than parrot-like chanting. Text 14. Sutta Goswami said, When the second millennium overlapped the third, the great sage Vyasadeva was born to Parashara in the womb of Satyavati, the daughter of Vasu. Purport. There is a chronological order of the four millenniums, namely Satya, Dvapra, Treta, and Kali. But sometimes there is overlapping. During the regime of Vaivasvatamanu, there was an overlapping of the 28th round of the four millenniums, and the third millennium appeared prior to the second. In that particular millennium, Lord Sri Krishna also descends, and because of this, there was some particular alteration. The mother of the great sage, was Satyavati, the daughter of the Vasu fisherman, and the father was the great Parashara Muni. That is the history of Vyasadeva's birth. Every millennium is divided into three periods, in each period is called a Sandhya. Vyasadeva appeared in the third Sandhya of that particular age. Text 15. Once upon a time, he, Vyasadeva, as the sun rose, took his morning ablution in the waters of the Saraswati and sat alone to concentrate. Purport. The river Saraswati is flowing in the Badarikashram area of the Himalayas. So the place indicated here is Shamyapras, 
in Badrik Ashram, where Sri Vyasadeva is residing. Text 16. The great sage Vyasadeva saw anomalies in the duties of the millennium. This happens on the earth in different ages due to the unseen force of time. Purport The great sages like Vyasadeva are liberated souls and therefore they can see clearly past and future. Thus he could see the future anomalies in the Kali Age and accordingly he made arrangement for the people in general so that they can execute a progressive life in this age which is full of darkness. The people in general in this age, Kali, are too much interested in matter, which is temporary. Because of ignorance, they are unable to evaluate the assets of life and be enlightened in spiritual knowledge. Texts 17 and 18 The great sage who was fully equipped with knowledge, could see with his transcendental vision the deterioration of everything material due to the influence of the age. He could also see that the faithless people in general would be reduced in duration of life and would be impatient due to lack of goodness. Thus he contemplated for the welfare of men in all statuses and orders of life. Purport The unmanifested forces of time are so powerful that they decay all matter in due course. In Kali Yuga, the last millennium of a round of four millenniums, the power of all material objects deteriorates by the influence of time. In this age, the duration of the material body of the people in general is much reduced, and so is the memory. The action of matter has also not so much incentive. The land does not produce food grains in the same proportions as it did in other ages. The cow does not give as much milk as it used to give formerly. The production of vegetables and fruits is less than before. As such, all living beings, both men and animals, do not have sumptuous, nourishing food. Due to want of so many necessities of life, naturally, the duration of life is reduced, the memory is short, intelligence is meager, mutual dealings are full of hypocrisy, and so on. The great sage Vyasadeva, being a liberated soul, could foresee this by his transcendental vision. As an astrologer can see the future fate of a man, or an astronomer can foretell the solar and lunar eclipses, liberated souls can foretell the future of all mankind by seeing through the scriptures. They can see the future on account of their sharp vision due to spiritual attainment. And all such transcendentalists who are naturally devotees of the Lord are always eager to render welfare service to the people in general. They are the real friends of the people in general, not the so-called public leaders who are unable to see what is going to happen five minutes ahead. In this age, the people in general, as well as their so-called leaders, are all unlucky fellows, faithless in spiritual knowledge and influenced by the age of Kali. They are always disturbed by various diseases. For example, in the present age, there are so many TB patients in TB hospitals, that's tuberculosis. But formerly, this was not so, because the time was not so unfavorable. 
The fortunate men of this age are always reluctant to give a reception to the transcendentalists who are representatives of Srila Vyasadev. And yet these selfless workers are always busy in planning something which may help everyone in all statuses and orders of life. The greatest philanthropists are those transcendentalists who represent the mission of Vyas, Narada, Madhva, Chaitanya, Rupa, Saraswati, and so on. They are all one and the same. The personalities may be different, but the aim of the mission is one and the same, namely to deliver the fallen souls back home, back to Godhead. Text 19 He saw that the sacrifices mentioned in the Vedas were means by which the people's occupations could be purified. And to simplify the process, he divided the one Veda into four in order to expand them among men. Purport Formerly there was only the Veda of the name Yajur, and the four divisions of sacrifices were there specifically mentioned. But to make them more easily performable, the Veda was divided into four divisions of sacrifice just to purify the occupational service of the, three, of the four orders. Above the four Vedas, namely Rig, Yajur, Sama, and Atarva, there are the Puranas, the Mahabharat, Sanghitas, and so on, which are known as the fifth Veda. Sri Vyasadeva and his many disciples were all historical personalities, and they were very kind and sympathetic toward the fallen souls of this age of Kali. As such, the Puranas and Mahabharata were made from relative historical facts which explained the teaching of the four Vedas. There is no point in doubting the authority of the Puranas and Mahabharata as parts and parcels of the Vedas. In the Chandogya Upanishad 7.1.4 the Puranas and Mahabharata generally known as histories are mentioned as the fifth Veda. According to Srila Jiva Goswami, that is the way of ascertaining the respective values of the revealed scriptures. Text 20 <clears throat> The four divisions of the original sources of knowledge, the Vedas, were made separately. But the historical facts and authentic stories mentioned in the Puranas are called the fifth Veda. Text 21 After the Vedas were divided into four divisions, Pila Rishi became the professor of the Rig Veda, Jaimini became the professor of the Sama Veda, and Vaishampayana alone became glorified by the Yajur Veda. Purport The different Vedas were entrusted to different learned scholars for development in various ways. Text 22 The Sumantu Muni the Sumantu Muni Angira who was very devotedly engaged was entrusted with the Atarva Veda and my father Ramaharshan was entrusted with the Puranas and historical records. Purport In the Shruti Mantras also, it is stated that Angira Muni, who strictly followed the rigid principles of the Atarva Veda, was the leader of the followers of the Atarva Veda. 23. All these learned scholars in their turn, rendered their, in, their entrusted Vedas unto their many disciples, grand disciples, and great grand disciples, and thus the respective branches 
of the followers of the Vedas came into being. Purport The original source of knowledge is the Vedas. There are no branches of knowledge, either mundane or transcendental, which do not belong to the original text of the Vedas. They have simply been developed into different branches. They were originally they were originally rendered by great respectable and learned professors. In other words, the Vedic knowledge divided into different branches has been distributed all over the world by different disciplic successions. No one therefore can claim independent knowledge beyond the Vedas. Text 24 Thus the great sage Vyasadeva, who was very kind to the ignorant masses, edited the Vedas so they, mu- so that th- so they might be assimilated by less intellectual men. Purport The Veda is one, and the reasons for the- its divisions in many parts are explained herewith. The seed of all knowledge, or the Veda, is not a subject matter which can easily be understood by any ordinary man. There is a stricture that no one should try to learn the Vedas who is not a qualified Brahmana. This stricture has been wrongly interpreted in so many ways. A class of men who claim Brahminical qualification simply by their birthright in the family of a Brahmana also claim that the study of the Vedas is a monopoly of the Brahmana caste only. Another section of the people take this as an injustice to members of the other castes who do not happen to take birth in a Brahmana family. But both of them are misguided. The Vedas are subjects which had to be explained even to Brahmaji by the Supreme Lord. Therefore, the subject matter is understood by persons with exceptional qualities of goodness. Persons who were in the modes of passion and ignorance are unable to understand the subject matter of the Vedas. The ultimate goal of Vedic knowledge is Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. This personality is very rarely understood by those who are in the modes of passion and ignorance. In the Satya Yuga, everyone was situated in the mode of goodness. Gradually, the mode of goodness declined during the Treta and Dwapara Yugas, and the general mass of people became corrupt. In the present age, the mode of goodness is almost nil. And so for the general mass of people, the kind-hearted, powerful sage, Srila Vyasadeva, divided the Vedas in various ways so that they may be practically followed by less intelligent persons in the mode of passion and ignorance. It is explained in the next shloka as follows. Text 25 Out of compassion, the great sage thought it wise that this would enable men to achieve the ultimate goal of life. Thus he compiled the great historical narration called the Mahabharat for women, laborers, and friends of the twice-born. Purport The friends of the twice-born families are those who were born in the families of Brahmanas, Chatriyas, and Vaishyas or the spiritually cultured families, but who themselves are not equal to their forefathers. Such descendants are not recognized as such for want of purificatory achievements. The purificatory activities begin even before the birth of a child, and the seed-giving reformatory process is called Garbhadana Sanskara. One who has not undergone such Garbhadana Sanskara 
for spiritual family planning is not accepted as being of an actual twice-born family. The Garbhadana Sangskara is followed by another purificatory process by other purificatory processes out of which the sacred thread ceremony is one. This is performed at the time of spiritual initiation. After this particular sangskara, one is rightly called twice born. One birth is calculated during the seed giving sangskara and the second birth is calculated as the, at the time of spiritual initiation. Only one who has been unable, only one who has been able to undergo such important sangskaras can rightly be called twice born. If the father and mother do not part undertake the process of spiritual family planning and simply beget children out of passion only, their children are called dvija bandhus. These dvija bandhus are certainly not as intelligent as the children of the regular twice-born families. The dvija bandhus are classified with the shudras and the woman class who are by nature less intelligent. The shudras and the women the, the shudras and the woman class do not have to undergo any sangskara, save in effect and accept the ceremony of marriage. <clears throat> the less intelligent classes of men, namely women, shudras, and unqualified sons of the higher castes, are devoid of necessary qualifications to understand the import of the transcendental Vedas. For them, the Mahabharata was prepared. The purpose of the Mahabharata is to administer the import of the Vedas. And therefore, within the Mahabharata is placed the Bhagavad Gita, the summary Veda. The less intelligent are more interested in stories than in philosophy. And therefore, the philosophy of the Vedas is included within the Mahabharata in the form of the Bhagavad Gita, spoken by Lord Sri Krishna. Vyasadeva and Lord Krishna are both on the transcendental plane, and therefore, they collaborated in doing good to the fallen souls of this age. The Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all Vedic knowledge. It is the first book of spiritual values, as the Upanishads are. The Vedanta philosophy is the subject matter for study by the spiritual graduates. Only the postgraduate spiritual student can enter into the spiritual or devotional service of the Lord. It is a great science. And the great professor is the Lord Himself in the form of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And persons who are empowered by Him can initiate others in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Hare Krishna. Text 26. O twice born Brahmanas, still his mind was not satisfied. Although he engaged himself in working for the total welfare of all people. Purport Sri Vyasadeva was not satisfied with himself. Although he had prepared literatures of Vedic value for the all-around welfare of the general mass of people. It was expected that he would be it was expected that he would be satisfied by all such activities, but ultimately he was not satisfied. Text 27 Thus the sage, being dissatisfied at heart, at once began to reflect, because he knew the essence of religion, and he said within himself, Purport
the sage began to search out the cause of not being satisfied at heart. Perfection is never attained until one is satisfied at heart. This satisfaction of heart has to be searched out beyond matter. Text 28 and 29 I have under strict disciplinary vows unpretentiously worshipped the Vedas, the spiritual masters, and the altar of sacrifice. I have also abided by the rulings and have showed the import of disciplic succession through the explanation of the Mahabharata, by which even women, shudras, and others, friends of the twice-born, can see the path of religion. Purport No one can understand the import of the Vedas without having undergone a strict disciplinary vow in disciplic succession. The Vedas, spiritual masters, and sacrificial fire must be worshipped by the desiring candidate. All these intricacies of Vedic knowledge are systematically presented in the Mahabharata for the understanding of the women class, the laborer class, and the unqualified members of Brahmana, Chatriya, or Vaishya families. In this age, the Mahabharata is more essential than the original Vedas. Text 30 I am feeling incomplete, although I myself am fully equipped with everything required by the Vedas. Purport Undoubtedly, Srila Vyasadeva was complete in all the details of Vedic achievements. Purification of the living being submerged in matter is made possible by the prescribed activities in the Vedas. But the ultimate achievement is different. Unless it is attained, the living beings, even though fully equipped, cannot be situated in the transcendentally normal stage. Srila Vyasadeva appeared to have lost the clue and therefore felt dissatisfaction. Text 31 This may be because I did not specifically point out the devotional service of the Lord, which is dear both to perfect beings and to the infallible Lord. Purport The cause of the dissatisfaction which was being felt by Srila Vyasadeva is expressed herein by his own words. This was felt for the normal condition of a living being in the, in the devotional service of the Lord. Unless one is fixed in the normal condition of service, neither the Lord nor the living being can become fully satisfied. This defect was felt by him when Narada Muni, his spiritual master, reached him. It is described as follows. And we will hear tomorrow how Narada Muni enters the Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. We'll stop our reading there. It's 7.46 and uh, pretty much on time. We have a special guest tonight, Bhakta Alexandris, who has come here from Latvia uh, at great risk, actually. Nowadays it's risky to travel <laughs> in order to receive his initiation, which will be tomorrow, uh, the disappearance of Sri Jiva Goswami. Very auspicious day. Hare Krishna. We welcome you. Hare Krishna. Okay. So the assembled sages is now being uh, uh, requested to reflect on what we've just heard. Very interesting information about the organization of the Vedas, how it came about, and uh, Hare Krishna.
Wisdoms from Rati Manjari. Hare Krishna Rati. She says, Jai Guru Maharaj. All glories to the daily readings. Mm. All glories to the followers of the daily readings. It's from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hari Bo Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and all assembled devotees, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada and your daily reading service, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. And from Vilas Manjari. Hare Krishna, Vilas Manjari. I so much enjoyed the letter you wrote to me and the video that you sent about the very uh, touching uh, neighborhood gathering to honor your father. It was just wonderful before he passed away. Hare Krishna. Well done. She says, Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I am happy to be back on board. I missed your reading so much. I was so busy caring for my father, I couldn't join. He left his body three days ago while I was chanting for him. It was an amazing journey. All glories to Srila Prabhupada's books, the precious transcendental gems, bringing the greatest auspiciousness to all who come in contact with them and their families. Hare Krishna, thank you so much for that beautiful reflection and for performing that pastime for your father. The Holy Name was there, the Bhagavad Gita's were there. It was very special, very sweet. And from Daitari Hari. Daitari Hari, Hari Bo. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thanks again for reading to us. Really liked the statement, realization is more important than parrot-like chanting. Yes. Yes, there's a very nice statement in the Bhagavad Gita, which is glorifying transcendental knowledge it says uh, there's nothing so sublime and pure as transcendental knowledge and the first statement of the purport is that when we speak of transcendental knowledge we speak of spiritual understanding you can't go a step forward unless you begin to have spiritual understanding it's the depth of our spiritual understanding which allows us to see properly what is going on here and act properly in order to help others and always also to uh, improve ourselves to the perfectional stage. Hare Krishna. From Gopal Roy. Haribo Gopal Roy, our hero. Dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. The mission of Sri Vyasadev to divide the Vedas to help mankind and how his many disciples were very kind and sympathetic toward the fallen souls and therefore engaged in distributing Vedic knowledge in creative, more accessible and digestible ways by the disciplic succession. Mm. And I would like to say that you are compiling Srila Prabhupada's books in audiobook format is another example of how the most compassionate Paramahamsas always think of ways to distribute spiritual knowledge for the benefit of suffering conditioned souls. Hare Krishna. I mean, I must admit that when I was recording the Chaitanya Charitamrita, periodically I would come up uh, to a purport in which Srila Prabhupada expressed how he feels when his books are published. And then I just heard, just two days ago Prabhupada was now I'm, I'm listening to the 1977 audio files com room conversations especially these ones where it's just before he leaves it's very intense and very spiritually purifying and Srila Prabhupada was listening to reports of his GBC men who had come to see him and it was obviously that he was very ill and although no one said anything or it wasn't spoken about so much, but it was clear that he was preparing to leave. And uh, they, were, they were 
explaining all of the results of the preaching, you know, photos of the palace in New Vrindavan, photos of installations of deities in different places, in Fiji, other places. And uh, Prabhupada was relishing. And then someone brought a book from Brazil, Sridananda Maharaj. And Prabhupada asked how many were printed. And he said 100,000. And Prabhupada went, oh, like that. It was just so sweet. And then he said, publication of my books gives me life. And because of his condition and how he said it, it was just very powerful, extremely powerful. So, yes, I accept this idea from Gopal Roy that this decision to distribute the audiobooks, so many people I meet, they're more interested in hearing than in reading, mm -hmm. the normal way of reading. But still, books are going out, people are buying them, they've all got libraries, and it's not that books aren't going to be there, but the assimilation of the books the actual reading of the books is more and more coming by hearing. So Vaishya Prabhu kindly commented to me that he thought that the audio books would be the next big thing for spreading Krishna consciousness. So may your words come true, Gopal. May we uh, assist the BBT in publishing Srila Prabhupada's major works in the, uh, in the audio book format. Hare Krishna. Prabhupada will surely be pleased. Hare Krishna. Goranga Gopal. Jai Goranga Gopal. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you for reading tonight. I have a question. If in Satya Yuga, People were situated in the mode of goodness, essentially. What does it mean for people whose karma in the previous cycle of yugas was contaminated with lower modes? Thank you very much. Well, the Satya Yuga is the first yuga. You know, at the end of the Kali Yuga, there is a destruction, and that's carried out by Kalki. And there are very few personalities on the earth after that destruction. But the ones who were left were all pure devotees and they uh, leave the earth alone and they don't pollute in any way and therefore the regeneration that happens during the last sandhya of the Kali Yuga it was mentioned in the, what we read. There are three sandhyas. There's a beginning sandhya, a middle sandhya and an end sandhya. Just like there are three parts of the day. It's the same kind of cycle. And uh, so the Satya Yuga is the beginning of the, of the, of the four, what we call Divya Yugas, a, a group of four uh, Yugas which form the basis of history. So what did he say in the beginning? He said, how, how, the, 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 how, how is it that the Satya Yuga is full of goodness when the ones before it were degraded. Was that more or less it? Sure. Yeah. So that's because it, it's the beginning of the cycle, not the end of the cycle. The nonsense has stopped. At the end of Kali Yuga, the nonsense stops and goodness comes to the fore again. It's interesting because the normal, we don't hear about it very much, uh, but the normal pattern is Satya, Dwapara, Treta. Treta means third. Treta is usually the third, but here the second and the third overlap, and the, tre and the Dwapara comes before the Kali Yuga. That's when uh, Vyasadeva appears, and that's when Krishna appears. That's when the Vedas are edited and written down so that the people of the Kali Yuga can uh, 
and the Mahabharat, so the cult and the Srimad Bhagavatam in particular, because it's, this is leading up to the reasons why he uh, he didn't really compile it, but he brought the Srimad Bhagavatam through meditation into the world. Hare Krishna. From Bhakta Rupa. Haribo Bhakta Rupa. He says, Jai Maharaj, thanks for reading this evening and always. I feel so grateful and blessed to be able to gather with the assembled Vaishnavas <coughs> here each night and hear you read and hear your mind blowing comments and answers to our questions. <laughs> This first canto is making more sense this time around in your association. <laughs> yes, it is. I really can't believe how lucky we are, and I can't thank you enough. I feel indebted to you, Maharaj. I want to always read these books aloud with others by your inspiration. Hare Krishna, thank, thank you so you. much. That's probably the nicest thing that anybody has ever said to me. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Everyone needs encouragement, and you just gave me a whole truck full of encouragement. <laughs> and more from Goranga Gopal. Haribo Goranga Gopal, Haribo. Also, I wondered why was Vyasadev. Why was Vyasadeva's unsatisfaction caused by not pointing out the devotional service of the Lord when he had already compiled the Mahabharata, which includes the Bhagavad Gita as well, which is, if I understood correctly, as good as the Srimad Bhagavatam? Because it's surrounded by other things. Because Krishna in the Mahabharata is a background, is in the background. He's not the main personalities he's there and it's it's clear what's going on but it's not exclusive and he his mind was not satisfied because he did not write something or produce something or reveal something in which the devo pure devotional service of the lord without any other impurity or any other mixed without being mixed with any politics or anything else uh, was given and therefore we'll see we'll hear over these next day or two uh, how Narada Muni appeared and how uh, he uh, suggested or highly recommended or instructed him to write the, the, the Srimad Bhagavatam hmm. from Anandamurti Devi Dasi Yes, Anandamurti Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj Please accept my humble obeisances All glories to Srila Prabhupada Jai Srila Prabhupada Thank you so much for reading today Today I heard that Vyasadev is trying to save me who is unqualified for studying the Vedas Devotional service is the only thing to do as a human being Thank you so much Exactly Precisely. And all of us are born as Shudras in this material world. Without the sanskaras, without the training, without the spiritual education that we've given before, all of us are in that same category. Hare Krishna. It's our good fortune that we've come in contact with the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada. From Vilas Manjari. Haribo Vilas Manjari. He says, Thank you, Maharaj, for keeping us all on the boat of transcendental knowledge. I would like to second the statement of Gopal Roy Prabhu. Ah. The devotees are an ocean of compassion, always finding ways to reach the fallen souls. Yes. <coughs> and from Subarao Rajagopal. Subha boy Rajagopal Hari Krishna. 
He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, <coughs> please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you for your reading. Srimad Bhagavatam 12, 12, 59. One who with undeviating attention constantly recites this literature at every moment of every hour, as well as one who faithfully hears even one verse or half a verse or a single line <laughs> or even half a line <laughs> certainly purifies his very self. Hare Krishna. Very nice. That was excellent scholarship. You brought out that 12th canto verse. Nice. Thank you very much. And more from Gauranga Gopal. Jai Gauranga Gopal. Thank you, Maharaj, for your answer. I wondered as well about where are all the conditioned souls killed by Kalki going? Are they all liberated? Yes. They're not, they don't necessarily go back to Goloka Vrindavan, but because only Krishna in his original form can give that kind of liberation but they will all be elevated by being killed by Kalki. From Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Tonight we heard that the... Tonight we heard that impatience is due to a lack of goodness. This rang true for me. Definitely I am one of those who prefer hearing to reading. Thanks to your daily readings, I am getting a regular dose of transcendental knowledge, which keeps me headed in the right direction of life, in spite of all my disqualifications. Well, welcome to the Kali Yuga, because it says in the beginning of the Bible, though we've already heard it now, that in the Kali Yuga, everybody is unfortunate and disturbed. Hare Krishna. So this is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. His mercy flows down to the most fallen. So we may think we're fallen, but the, our eligibility is being mo most fallen. Lord Chaitanya came and he turned it around, like I've been saying the last couple of days. You know, originally the Yuga Dharmas, the meditation, <coughs> the big sacrifices, the elaborate uh, temple worship, were pu were to pure aimed at purifying so that that the participant could come to the point of chanting Hare Krishna because chanting Hare Krishna is the highest spiritual activity. So Lord Chaitanya came and turned it around. He gave us the highest thing to purify us so that we could chant the highest thing. The holy name is always there and always has been there since the history of the un universe. But one has to be purified to be, be eligible to be eligible to chant the Maha Mantra properly. So before you couldn't chant the Maha Mantra until you've meditated or done big sacrifices or doing or perform perfect, you know, uh, worship of the Lord's form before chanting. But now Lord Chaitanya has given us right from the beginning the highest process, the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. That is the ultimate good fortune. And we took birth only 500 years after Lord Chaitanya. That is an incalculable good fortune. He only comes once every 8 billion, 600 million years. So what is the percentage of 500 to 8 billion, 600 million? You have calculator. What is the percentage? It's practically zero. It's practically no possibility. Or the for good fortune is, yeah, incalculable. So if we hold on to that perception of our good fortune, just how fortunate we are to have taken birth so short a time after Lord Chaitanya appeared, then we will become inspired always there's no need for us to become uninspired over anything 
because of our good fortune to be able to be under the uh, shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and just ten generations before Hare Krishna Hare Bo Nathan Manjari commented thank you please bless us that we may take up the chanting of Hare Krishna in all earnestness yes all earnestness means to learn the art of chanting without offense and the first thing that has to happen is that our senses and mind have to become purified, controlled. Uh, and that happens by following the four regulated principles, which are the roots of all other sinful activities. If you stop these four sinful activities, we become purified. And then we can chant Hare Krishna uh, in the clearing stage and then eventually in the pure stage premanam sankirtan then you get love of god you can't get love of god by any other there's so many verses that state not by performing sacrifices not by doing austerities not by becoming very learned in the vedas not by following the duties of varnashram perfectly will you get love of godhead love of Godhead is given to only those who Krishna chooses and he, cho he chooses those who have come in contact with his pure devotees Hare Krishna so focus our minds on this good fortune and then we will always be inspired I'm Bhakti Sebastian Bhakti Sebastian Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you for your daily reading. I had quite a rough week, but your readings always pick me up, and Sri the Prabhupada's words rub my back. I am not a hopeless case. Yes, <laughs> stay strong. Far from it, far from it, Bhakti Sebastian. Far from it. Really kind of you too. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Well, that was really lovely. Uh, lovely reflections. Lovely discussion. Srimad uh, Bhagavatam ki jai. Samavira Bhakti Vrinda ki jai. Gaur Premanandi. Hari Hari Bo. See you tomorrow night. Same time. Same place. Same topic. The ever expanding juicy, sweet, deep spiritual explanation of the Vedanta Sutra called Srimad Bhagavatam. See you tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Thank you.